Morning, I'm Neil Parsons, CEO of Design Build Pros. I'm here on site in West Windsor, New Jersey with my son Andrew Parsons, Design Build Pros, and John Hogan, owner of Blue Nail Exteriors. We're here to walk through John's job here. Uh, it's a roofing, new roofing project on a large home in a very nice development. John is going to explain to Andrew and us exactly what they're doing specifically on the project. All right, so what's going on there, John? Uh, we just started this morning. Let's see, we stripped the roof. Um, shingles are down on the roof. Uh, the first step was putting down our ice and water shield. Um, something that we specifically do is always install two layers of ice and water. Um, that gives you six feet of coverage for your gutter lines. And the eaves. The reason I do that is The warm weather wall is where the heat is rising in your house, where it's a conditioned, a conditioned area, uh, air conditioning heat. So even if you have a one foot overhang that's your 12 inches and they're three foot sheets, but you have to account for the pitch. So that's going to take up some of that area. So you might fall short if it's just one sheet. Uh, I feel safer and more comfortable doing it because if you do have a problem at all of your gutter lines with ice and water, it's not as simple as just coming out to seal something. You probably have to strip pretty much 10 feet back all the way around your house, put in another layer of ice and water, gotcha. and then new shingles. So it's going to look a little crazy uh, if it does come to that. So that's why we do that. It's gotcha. pretty much standard. Yep. Um, John, if you would walk us around the job. Sure. And, and, so and, so and, and, and speak up with the compressors going. Okay. What kind of material are you using here, John? After ice and water, you can see that that layer up there that says resistor, that's a synthetic uh, moisture barrier. We used to use 15 pound felt, um, that was just kind of saturated in asphalt. This is synthetic, it's, uh, it lays flatter, it gives you a better insulation, and it's safer for the guys. It's grippier, so uh, less risk of Falling and sliding, yeah, like that. Yeah, it was dangerous. Um, another thing we're doing here is if you see those square cutouts in the room, in the back, there's actually six or seven of them, and on the other side, uh, that was your ventilation process. They, these houses were built with soft vents underneath the eaves, and that's where the gutters are. So that's your intake when the wind blows. The exhaust was through vents up here, um, which is great, that's a great system to have, but it doesn't look as great, so what we're going to do is we're going to cover over where the vents were, uh, we're going to put down new CDX plywood, and we're going to cut in ridge vents along the ridges of the entire house, Okay. so it's going to be a more seamless look, the shingle's going to look better, uh, it's going to be a little bit better in performance, because now the exhaust is going to run along the entire ridge, Okay. what that allows John, what do we have here uh, shingle-wise? What do we get delivered uh, here? This is GAF Timberline. Color is uh, Williamsburg Slate, which is popular among brick-faced houses. Um, it's gray with a little bit of red, but not enough red to uh, really look red. It's just enough to bring out brick. Um, and these are Timbertex capping shingles, which, uh, so for the ridge capping, this Timbertex they're thicker, they give you a better shadow line. So on a hip roof like this, where you're going to drive down the street, and you're going to see this entire hip going up. Um, you're going to see those those capping shingles a lot clearer than you would just a regular gable like we have across the street. Um, so these are the upgraded shingles. The, uh, the standard is JF Sealer Ridge. This Timbers Tech stuff is a little more expensive, but it's, it looks 